whenever I'm giving out communion, I notice often the responses that I get. And most of the time, 98% of the time, it is amen. When we say body of Christ to somebody, the response that we say is amen, which means I believe. It's an affirmation of, yes, this is the body of Christ, the real presence of the Lord. But every so often, someone will come up and I'll give them communion and they'll say, thank you. And I'm not sure if I should say you're welcome. I think that was the polite thing that I was taught, but it's not really the proper thing to do. Sometimes we'll give communion and the person won't know what to do. I hope that they were taught properly. I know if they went to Annunciation Catholic Academy or through our faith formation program here, they would know that the proper response is amen. And that's really what we do because it's a moment that's really different than any other moment in our week. When we receive the Eucharist, we have an intimate moment with the Lord. We are uniting ourselves with him in an incredible closeness. So when I'm giving communion, I often try to look into the eyes of people, and I come to a realization that every person that comes forward is in a different place. You know, each one of us has a very unique and different relationship with the Lord. But when we come forward to receive the Eucharist, what is it that we are looking for? What are we looking for in our relationship with Christ? And are we truly willing to invest in a deeper and more spiritual opportunity to be with him? To appreciate his real presence. Today in the scriptures, we hear not only from the Old Testament, but also in the Gospel reading, what people were looking for from God. And really what they were looking for was a physical satisfaction. But it's apples and oranges. You see, the people were looking for food. After the scripture last weekend, which was the multiplication of loaves and fishes, they were looking for Jesus again to feed them. They were looking for a free meal. But really with the Lord, there's no free meal because it comes with a deeper relationship with him. See, on the other hand, what Jesus was looking to give was the fullness of his teaching. He was trying to bring the people to eternal life, to a, again, deeper relationship with him. So one was looking for the physical, and Jesus was looking to give the spiritual. The people were looking to have their body fed, Jesus was looking to feed the soul. So there's kind of a conflict that occurs there. And so as a result, Jesus has to kind of bring them to a deeper place. He's looking for them to recognize him, to see his real presence. So today, when you come forward for communion, I would ask you to say amen, not just today, but every time you receive, but really to think about what it is that you are presenting yourself to God for? What are you looking for from him? What do your eyes tell and say about your relationship with God? Because really the eyes are a view into the soul. When you look into someone's eyes, you usually can tell what they're thinking. And when we come forward to receive, to remember that we are receiving the real presence of Christ. We're going to be hearing for the next four weeks about the bread of life. It comes from John chapter 6. In cycle B, we always have this portion in the summertime of these weeks when we read from John. We get away from Mark and we get into John. And it talks more about just Jesus is the bread of life. I am the bread of life. I came to give life. So it's really a chance for us to think about our devotion to the Eucharist our ability of coming to Mass, and our commitment to that, to really making sure that we receive the Lord with a heart that is pure, with a heart that is open. Now, I will tell you, occasionally somebody will ask me, Father, now, if I get to Mass late, can I still receive communion? Like, how late can I get there and still receive communion? I kind of can't believe that somebody would ask me that question because, you see, really what Jesus was doing today was teaching and then feeding. So we come for the teaching from the Word of God in order that we can receive. You see, we're fed not just with the host, 
and with his real presence, but we're fed on the sacred scriptures. Because sometimes people will say, well, I go to a a church where uh, they teach the Bible. You know, I'm a Christian, and so we teach the Bible. Well, folks, we teach it too. We invented it, okay? So basically, when you come to Mass, you're learning about God, and then you're receiving him. Now, on the flip side of that, I know that sometimes, and I know it never would happen here at Annunciation, that somebody would leave right after communion, of course, because I just can't imagine that really happening, because that would be like going to a big dinner and getting up before dessert is served. And how could you do that? Because you're leaving before the final blessing. You're leaving before really one of the most important parts of the Mass to be sent forth. Who does not want to be blessed? I hope we all want to be blessed. So we come before to receive his teaching. We stay after in order to receive his blessing. But really what are we looking for inevitably is communion with God, is union with him by receiving him in ourselves We are then sent forth to be able to be the Lord, to be reminded of his presence in a world that does not always recognize him.